Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It's been a while. So today I want us to go ahead and jump right on into the 3.16 changes for Righteous Fire, mainly more so for Inquisitor, since I have not played too much of the Marauder variants or the Elementalist variants. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So regarding the actual raw patch notes from 3.16, I went in and pretty much scooped majority of what would affect our current gameplay. I know it looks kind of scuffed, but anyway, let's jump right on into it. Um, so Purity of Elements got a big change where uh, it grants increased elemental res from what it used to. The reservation went up from 35 uh, to 50, but you also now gain elemental ailment immunity while you are running it. Now, this is very good for a number of reasons. Uh, let's just go into like number one would be a multiple conversion Watcher's Eye you could find with Purity of Fire and Purity of Elements. Uh, another thing is it helps gearing tempered by war easier and with reservation changes, I'm pretty sure we can actually use this, but we'll go into this later. So, uh, let's go into some other things. Armor has been massively buffed, more so for, I would say, our build than others. And the reason why I say that is we actually have the ability to take armor nodes. Armor ES is the favored base as an Inquisitor, but a lot of the time, since armor didn't feel very impactful or meaningful, we didn't really see a point in scaling it. Now, armor actually should be pretty decent. Um, a lot of the time when you play Inquisitor, and you're playing Righteous Fire Inquisitor specifically, there's like a very big gap between entering red maps and trying to not die versus like speed clearing yellow maps. A large part of why players would die when following my build guide is they didn't have all their sources of fire conversion or fist conversion to fire because it can be hard to get, right? You've got like 8% on helmet. You've got the Watcher's Eye. You've got, uh, you know, your chest piece can roll very high. You've got Tempered by War that can also have conversion within there. There might be something else I forgot. Um, you know, you've got Taste of Hate for Fizz to Cold. But anyway, now being able to hopefully scale armor much more reliably without going too far out of our way, we're going to get a lot more physical damage reduction before counting in the conversion, which should hopefully make um, kind of just progressing through with Righteous Fire much, much safer. Now, granted, we are losing Fortify, which we'll go into later, but I hope that this is more reliable form, uh, forms of defense because even though it's not hard to keep up Fortify, it can be very frustrating trying to keep up Fortify in a lot of endgame encounters when you're on like a six second window. So a new keystone is being added on the tree called Divine Shield. It's very similar to the Jug Node, except it's specifically for ES, which should work really well for our build. I don't know how good it's gonna be yet, but I don't think it's very far out of the way, so I think it's worth testing. Or basically, a percentage of physical damage that we have prevented from hits is regenerated as energy shield per second. Cannot recover energy shield to above armor, which is fine. We're only going to have a couple thousand ES, and we're going to have a lot more armor. Um, as for where this node is, it's right here on the left, Divine Shield. So it's really not that far out of the way. We're either pathing this way or, like, this way. Because I'm probably grabbing Divine Judgment over here, and we're definitely grabbing this Life Wheel, and we're definitely grabbing the Endurance Charge, and we're absolutely going to be around here. So this doesn't really affect us at all, which is good. So it's not that far out of the way at all. Okay. So Consecrated Ground has received a slight nerf. Um, instead of regenerating 6%, we now regenerate 5.5, but Inquisitor gets buffed. So that's okay. That's not a problem at all. Blinded now causes targets to have 20% less accuracy rating and evasion rating. So what this means is we cannot run Flesh and Stone anymore for Blind. Blind is kind of negligible for our build. It's mainly for evasion. Um, before, it used to really... It used to just be insane even if you had no evasion because you could essentially make mobs have a 50% chance to hit you and then you stack in Feeble and now they have like an... 80% chance to never hit you as a character with like 500 evasion. So blind, which one is one of our main sources of defense, did get gutted. But with raw mitigation, we should be okay. If we're not okay, you can always plug in a block variant and then you should be okay. That's going to be more expensive though. So fortify, here are two big sources of uh, defense being kind of removed. Fortify now gives you stack of fortification based on the percentage of the enemy's ailment threshold dealt by the hit that applied fortify tldr i don't really think we're going to hit very hard with shield charge therefore i don't know if we're going to be granted a proper fortify personally i'm okay with this as it's kind of annoying running shield charge fortify on like almost every build or insert vigilant strike fortify so 
I look at this as like a quality of life buff. And, you know, if it actually is okay, then I'm pretty happy. All right. Big one. Uh, Righteous Fire has had massive damage increase. Um, so, you know, from 15.41 to 2,400. And it now deals 35% of life and ES as base fire damage instead of 20. Also, Vol Righteous Fire got a mega buff from 99% to 158. Scorching Ray and Flame Wall have both received big buffs. And here's why. Elemental Overload and Elemental Equilibrium are pretty much... I mean, Elemental Equilibrium is still okay, but Elemental Overload is pretty much dicked for our build. It does not work at all. Elemental Overload now gives more hit and ailment damage, which it's it, it doesn't matter. So you don't get Ellie Overload anymore. That part is completely removed. Elemental Equilibrium is actually okay because it applies exposure with elements not hit. So using an Elemental Equilibrium, uh, sorry, an Elemental Equilibrium Scepter, which I think you can get out of Iced, might be our BIS and our favorable item. So that's kind of cool. Um, there's also ways you can scale exposure now even easier with new mastery system that's coming out, but I can't jump into that too much because they haven't really released everything. So this is, this is a nice change. Here is a very, 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 very big change that from what I've seen, all the people on Reddit who are complaining about like RF is being nerfed even more, which that very well may be the case. I'm not a number cruncher, but... Um, this is kind of a big part for RF. So, more scaling options have been added to damage over time builds on the passive tree. So, there's more damage over time on the passive tree, more multi on the passive tree because of mastery. But, for the actual crafting, there's now five tiers of global damage over time multiplier suffix that rolls on all weapons, which I didn't really think much about. But, here's where the big one is. There are five tiers of global damage damage over time multiplier suffix on amulets and the uh there is a new global damage over time multiplier suffix that can roll on all jewels the reason why i bring this up is unless stated otherwise they actually buffed the fire multi and uh well they buffed all the multi but basically fire multi on jewels can roll up to eight percent and you can get another multi roll of six putting you at a 14% multi-jewel, you could have a 7% life, 14% multi-jewel. That is like very big for Righteous Fire. So this is where I'm excited with end game nitty gritty crafting. Um, since cluster jewels got super nerfed with Burning Brights removal, we gained more points to spend because we don't go into cluster jewels really. And now we can spend those points on jewels and have very good end game jewels. So I'm excited to see where this takes us. Highest Path now grants 50% increased effect of Consecrated Ground you create. Um, this is really big because this means that the regeneration nerf on Pious Path does not affect us as Inquisitor. In fact, we get more. So that's even better. Also, I don't know where this was posted, but we actually get 50% curse reduction on our Consecrated Ground. And this 50% should scale up to 75%. Thus, we only really need one cluster, I'm pretty sure, of curse resistance on the tree and will be at 90 to 100% curse resistance. So running Purity of Elements, you're immune to Shock, Ignite, Chill, Freeze, and then being an Inquisitor on Consecrated Ground, which is all the time because it lingers, we're basically immune to almost every curse in the game, which is fantastic because that means when you're mapping, um, you know, if you just are barely at the baseline of res, a lot of random things can happen when you're mapping that a lot of people don't realize. And if you're RF, you're like front and center in front of everything, so there are some very few instances where monsters can apply elemental equilibrium to you, thus absolutely destroying your res. There were cases where you're running an Ellie weakness map and a mob like flammabilities you or something. So a lot of these are kind of like relieved, I guess you could say, with the curse resistance. Again, it's not really something that affects a lot of people, but if you play the build for a while, you'll you'll notice some of these things happening. So I'm really happy about this. And then the, the last one over here, actually not the last one, but then there's the trickster one I was talking about where... This new notable here is the Trickster Ascendancy. They replace Ghost Dance with every 10 seconds, take no damage over time for five seconds. This is great for Righteous Fire, not because you're trying to sustain it with this, but if you already have a very well-sustained Righteous Fire build, 
you're already regening like 15, 20, 30% of your max life a second. When this ticks, you're regening like, I don't know, like 50, 70% of your life per second. You're just instant, instant up. Um, then that stacks with the Trickster's Recovery node. And then this also can stack with Arakali. And then there's a new Keystone. So I'm really curious on RF Trickster. Something, uh, something unique I have not played really ever. I've played a few like RF Tricksters to like level 80, but that's not really playing a build in my opinion. So this is something that I'm really excited for. Also with the changes to uh, Spell Dodge, Spell Dodge being turned into Spell Suppression, which actually mitigates damage. I think that's much better for an RF playstyle. Okay, uh, going on to some other things. Uh, Awakened Gems have received some buffs. So Awakened Burn Damage now grants plus one level of supported fire skill gem at level five. We don't really run Awaken Burn, but if you're running it for like your six link setup for Scorching Air Flame Wall, this is big. Then you get Awaken Control Destruction. Supported skills have a chance to unnerve on hit. This sucks because we don't hit. So I'm sad about that. I really am. But you could put it on like Orb of Storms or something, but you know, I don't really want to do that. Uh, then you've got Awakened Elemental Focus. Grants plus one to level of supported elemental gem. This we use in RF 100%. So in our regular helmet link, we would get a plus one. So this is very good. All right, that pretty much summarizes the patch notes. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit now about the tree and kind of how mastery works, if you guys are not familiar. So I don't have a very good link of mastery, but I do have one of them. Okay, so here is a here is a link to basically chaos mastery. So the way mastery the way mastery essentially works is you can go into a notable section, and when you pick up the actual notable, you're allowed to spend a point to unlock a mastery. You cannot have one percent to chaos damage overtime multiplier like multiple times. You can only have this one time, right? But it's pretty good. So in the tree here, we have sources of fire mastery located here, fire mastery located here, and fire mastery located here. And then an interesting thing is there's actually damage over time mastery, which is something else we would want, located above Ellie Overload. So even though we're trying to dodge Ellie Overload, sadly, I don't think we're going to be able to dodge Ellie Overload because it's right here. The other thing is picking up the wheel right here. I think this is Devotion, right? On the Templar side. If you grab this Devotion wheel with the new aura changes, um, this, this aura calculator is for the most part updated to 3.16. It may not be perfect, but running a level three enlighten which is a fair chase item to put for you know league start with a purity of fire purity of elements and malevolence puts us at 30 mana if we were to min max this to say get a level four enlighten and then run a level one vitality because we have a good watcher's eye we still have 38 which is enough to cast spells may not be enough to have the smoothest play style but this is kind of just some cool min maxing on not anything really too crazy that pretty much summarizes everything I kind of wanted to go over. Again, this is not necessarily a build guide, more of just like informative content for you guys. Once they update the skill tree, I will then have a skill tree outline of what I'm going to do. And then, you know, actual guides will come in a little bit later once I have played through the league for like a day or two. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. Have a wonderful time. Nice to see you again, YouTube.